Godzilla X Kong decimates the box office, Christopher Nolan is set to receive a knighthood, and an actor is in talks to be cast as Harvey Dent in The Batman 2. Let's get into this week's movie news. What's up movie friends? Welcome back to Raiders of the Lost Podcast. There's a lot to go over this week. The box office has completely rebounded from the very slow start of the year. There's some Pirates of the Caribbean rumors as well as a bunch of other interesting stories. But let's get into the box office. But before that, we're going to do an announcement that we're going to give away 10 tickets to our live show, which is going to be in Boston on April 18th. That's a Thursday night. All you have to do to enter the contest is just send us an Instagram direct message on our account, Raiders of the Lost Podcast, and you'll be entered into the contest to receive a free ticket to go see us live at the Middle East in Boston, Massachusetts on April 18th. We're going to pick winners in 48 hours, so be sure to send us those DMs on Instagram if you want to come see us live in Boston. And if you don't win the contest, tickets are super cheap. Just use the links that we have in our Instagram bio, in our episode descriptions, or just go to RaidersOfTheLostPodcast.com. There's a button to get tickets right there on the homepage. Now let's get into this week's box office. Now, like I said, March has been a huge upside month for the box office compared to January and February with movies like Dune 2 and Kung Fu Panda crushing this weekend. Godzilla X Kong the New Empire broke out with the biggest opening weekend so far this year 75 million dollars domestically for the MonsterVerse film. What a banger. It's a good time too. Yeah. We saw an early access screening to it like 2 weeks ago. It's the 5th film in the current legendary Warner Brothers MonsterVerse. And it's fun. It's sort of um very planets of the planet of the apes as you could say. Lots of monkeys in this but it's a good time, you know. I had I had an enjoyable experience. It was good. I, it, was, it, was, it was just a light monster monster movie with giant monsters fighting. Yeah, you know, what I mean, it's cool. it doesn't need to have a great script. I I had an enjoyable experience, and then there's actually a huge division in this film between critics and audiences. So critics have given this film overall a 55 percent rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Whereas the audience score is 92 percent. People just had a good time. Yeah, I'm not super familiar with the monster verse. I've seen about half of all the films, but it looked like it was made for fans, That's exactly by fans. What it was. And I think that this movie is perfect for people who love that world and that those IPs. This movie was made for you, and I just think like this is a movie you walk into, shut your brain off, have a good time. It was a, an enjoyable experience, I'll say. It was enjoyable. Next, get into. We sec- actually have a review tomorrow. Yeah, we do actually. Yeah. That's right. I forgot a full about episode that. of uh, Godzilla X Kong. And then in second place, Dune's finally been kicked out of the top two. And we have Ghostbusters, the new, the Frozen Empire. So we have Godzilla, two empires. Godzilla X Kong, the new empire. Then we have Ghostbusters, the Frozen Empire. Thank God Dune Two wasn't called Dune Part Two, the new empire. Is this the second? The Sandy week for, Empire. Is this Ghostbusters second weekend out? <laughs> yeah, second weekend. So it pulled fifty million dollars domestically. It did forty six million last weekend. Okay, so it's been a successful film, but obviously we talked about last week how it's not been very well received by critics and fans alike. And I've watched a couple of reviews on it. I haven't seen it yet. People seem to say the same thing about it that it's just got no soul there's too many characters going on too many plot lines too many storylines you have like 12 ghostbusters now <laughs> and it's just the teenagers aren't as likable as they were in the first film but i've also heard that it's more enjoyable than afterlife i don't know i haven't seen it yet um but i don't know the lukewarm response has yeah, kept me away from it i'm not really enticed yeah. to see this film anymore yeah. i mean i'm not i don't know about that we'll see but maybe place the box office maybe when it comes out on streaming i'll watch it but so far the box office let me see if i can get the total number it's up to worldwide 74 million dollars at the box office on a budget of let's see let, let, what do you think this i would say the made? budget's not too far off from that I'd say 90 100 million dollar budget mm-hmm. so maybe 150 dollars total it'll do really well dollars. really well global market those movies always do all right next up we have dune part two in the third spot this weekend with 10.6 million dollars domestically and it has now hit 586 million worldwide for its global run kung fu panda came in fourth place with 10 million dollars immaculate is in fifth place with three million dollars and 11 million dollars total domestic so the movie is making money like we said it probably will top out around 25 30 million globally it's already passed its production budget yeah tilu square which is a new indian rom-com uh came in sixth place with 2.5 million Mark Wahlberg's Arthur the King in seventh place with two point three million and a pretty modest eighteen million dollar total run for that. Uh, Late Night with the Devil came in eighth place with two point two million this weekend, bringing its total to five million for its complete domestic run so far. That movie 
Uh, the cheapest one made on this on this entire list with a $2 million budget. It's a very modest budget for that film. That was a $2 million budget? Yeah. Is it mostly in that location of the studio? It's all that location. Yeah. yeah. Very smart that how they sense. did that. Uh, Crew, which is a, another uh, Indian language film about a crew of flight stewardess who does who do, uh, plan a robbery on a plane. Actually, a pretty cool concept. Uh, debuted with $1.7 million. Domestic market, and then Cabrini still in the top ten with one point six million, bringing its total to nineteen million dollars in America. Very big week. Yeah. Lots of people going to the theaters. I-, I love to see it. We love, love, love to see it, especially because there's so many kinds of movies out there. We got horror. We have animated. We have kids. We have the masterpiece of Dune Part Two. It's we- a buffet. Yeah, we have You're monster right. movies. This is you can't complain if you go to the cinema this weekend. Like, there's nothing for me to see. There's something for everybody. There's a, this is a Las Vegas buffet. There's Every no, kind of food there is. The only thing that's missing is musicals. <laughs> there's no musical. Yeah, you're right. It's well, too anyways, bad. Let's get into something really cool and tasty. <laughs> Knighthoods are an exceptional award for people from the UK born there uh, that you can be in the arts and the creative arts and be a knight. You know, we have so many Sir Ian McKellen's and some of so the many greatest artists in the film and industry <laughs> in the film industry have become knights. Christopher Nolan is going to receive a knighthood in England and will become Sir Christopher Nolan if his name wasn't badass enough. Now you add a sir at the beginning of it. Sir Ridley Scott's another director that has a knighthood. His producing partner and wife Emma Thomas has also received a will also receive a damehood. Nice. She'll be she'll be Dame Emma Thomas and Sir Christopher Nolan. What a badass family right there. That's so awesome. Good for them. That sounds so cool, Sir Christopher Nolan. They deserve oh it. Oh my god. They deserve so it. So deserved. That's what happens when you win an Oscar, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you define movies for 20 years. <laughs> All right, next up, speaking of just bouncing off Chris Nolan, we have some Batman news. We love to bounce off Chris. For the Batman 2. Rumors are percolating that a certain actor is in talks to play Harvey Dent. And it's an actor James and I talk about fairly often on the show who's an cr- incredibly underrated actor, Boyd Holbrook. He's a terrific actor. And he's one of those actors that, like, they, he has the stuff, but he hasn't had quite had the role to, like, bring him to big stardom but he's got the potential and he has the talent and if he plays if he's cast as Harvey Dent I think that's a great choice I think he's a fantastic actor and it could really help blow up his career in a big way I think so too because I'm curious to see if he'll be in the Bob Dylan biopic that Mm -hmm. we've again the cool behind the scenes photos of set photos of Timothy Chalamet as Bob Dylan who looks just like him the hair and makeup team oh my god they did a terrific job he looks just like Bob Dylan so Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see that movie, and obviously I wonder if Boyd Holbrook would be in it because he's not in every Mangold film, but he's a Mangold regular. Like He's, he's not been in a Ford, ton. He's not in Ford vs. Ferrari, but he's in a few of them. He played know? the Ferrari. <laughs> he was the Ferrari. <laughs> no, he did the voiceover for the for the engine. He's good. <laughs> All right, Boyd, a little more, a little more diesel. <laughs> Give me that V8. <laughs> but I think he's an actor, like we like they said, who who can really knock out a great role. And I think that this could be a big one for him. So I think it'd be a perfect casting, honestly. I remember being very excited with his role in Indy Five, and then he ended up just being kind of like a just kind of their henchman. That's just the movie. Yeah. It's just a kind of their movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just there. Happy. It's not, not much you can do with it. He's just a, yeah, just a gun. He's just a gun. Gun for hire. Movie. Yeah. Uh, but he, he has a lot of potential and there's a lot of upside. And I think him as Harvey Dent is a really great casting. When it comes to comic book movies, he's one of the better villains yeah. when it comes to comic book movies. No one ever puts him in a list in Logan. He's awesome. Yeah, he's great. He's really great in that he's film. He's fantastic in Logan. All right. Very cool. Um, th- speaking of, uh, you brought Bob Dylan. There's another uh, biopic in the works from Scott Cooper, fantastic director, uh, about the boss, Bruce, Bruce Springsteen. News has come out that Jeremy Allen White is in talks to play the legendary Bruce Springsteen in this biopic, which would tell the story of uh, Bruce putting together the Nebraska album, which is like his fourth or fifth studio album um, that he made pretty much independently. He just made it on a cassette tape, on his four-track tape. Uh, privately, and then he brought it to his band to make. That's what he generally did. He would make songs on his own, and then with the E Street Band, they would produce it in an actual studio. But this album, he he forgot. He, they forewent that, and they were like the songs were so good. He met, he made basically just kept them as the raw four track tape recordings. However, they spent like a week recording these songs and a bunch of other songs, and a lot of the tracks they actually played around with ended up being on the. The next album in 1984, uh, Born on the Fourth of July album. I mean, I mean, um, Born in the USA album. 
which is the yeah, it's a Tom Cruise movie. <laughs> yeah, Born in the Born in the USA is big, one of the biggest albums ever, still to this day. Has so many of his hits on it, but they made most of those tracks Born in the USA. They made most of those tracks while recording stuff for this album, and also they apparently they recorded fifteen songs in one night. That's a lot. So it seems like a really cool story to tell rather than just a biopic about his entire career. Let's just focus on this very small part of his history, which is really cool. I like that because that worked so well with Fastbender in the Steve Jobs film where it's just focused on three-man events versus mm-hmm. the entire life and evolution of Apple, of Macintosh to Apple computers and yeah. Steve Jobs' whole life. Just focus on main events. I, I like that, and I'm really curious. And Jeremy Allen White's an awesome actor. I think he'd portray the boss really well he looks sort of like him from that age when he likes he, to wear sleeveless shirts yeah but yeah. like the like the tank top but also the aesthetic the look he looks like the boss to an extent not as much as someone people people say he should be in a gene wilder biopic starring him that'd <laughs> yeah. be a no-brainer yeah. but biopics of musicians have been so hot in hollywood the last five years and they're not going away <laughs> anytime soon so everyone's gonna get a biopic and I love Scott Cooper. I think this is a really cool, uh, uh, awesome idea for a film. I, I'm, I hope Alan gets cast. I think he's a good choice for this role. I'm surprised no uh, one's announced or tried to make a Kurt Cobain biopic lately. I'm sure that the rights to his life are being held on very tightly. I wonder who owns them. I wonder if Courtney Love owns Courtney them. Courtney loves them. Yeah. I'm, I doubt she'll ever sell the rights to it. Because Gus Van Sant made a sort of film based on the last days of his life. Unofficial. Called, called The yeah. Last Days, yeah. starring Michael Pitt. Pitt. As Kurt Cobain, the final days. Very of his good life. movie, very, very good, good movie. Yeah, but there hasn't really been a Kurt Cobain biopic that I think would kill. She was, yeah, she's still. I, I doubt she'll ever sell the life rights to him. All right, let's move on to some other interesting news. Our boy Ryan Gosling is teaming up with Amazon, so he's launching his own production. He company. left Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> so he's launching his own production company with Jesse Henderson and has signed a first look deal with Amazon. They will collaborate with filmmakers to create bold theatrical and streaming events within all genres, some of which some of which Gosling will star in. So he just got the bag. He Producer got a bag. bag. He Producer got bag. a bag. I guarantee you like probably 50 mil bag. Oh, yeah. Partnership for like 10 with years. Amazon? Pro- yeah. I mean, they give stars 20 mil a movie. Like they gave Matt and Ben 20 million to make air. Yeah. Each. So each. <laughs> that's where that budget went. This I mean, that's great. Check. Yeah. And also the fact that it's a theatrical event in this as well. I think this is smart for both parts because Ryan Gosling, he's the biggest star in the world. And I think after people see the fall guy, they'll, if you haven't been on board with Ryan as your number one, is the, like the number one guy right now. I think after that movie, people will really buy in. You're on board with him right now. Oh, You're I'm, wearing his hat. Yeah, I got the hat that he wears <laughs> in the movie. It's fucking great. Um, because that movie's great, but it, it showcased, obviously he has the star power. We all love him, but now bring him more into the action genre for Fourier so he can do anything. Not that he hasn't done action, but this is going to be a very big action film, the biggest one he's done. And I think as for big stars, they a lot of them like kind of need that. And he hasn't really had the massive action movie yet, I don't think. His I mean his, his huge action movie was The Gray Man and That was yeah, that's nobody not a likes good movie. that. Yeah. This is it. This yeah. is the juice. This is a good movie. I think ironically like, because of Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> But people are going to love it, and I think this is a really good idea, especially bouncing off this movie coming out in uh, just a month. Speaking of actors signing first look deals with studios, did you hear about Chalamet? I did not hear about Chalamet. Oh, is it Warner Brothers? Timothy Chalamet signed a first look producing and acting partnership with Warner Brothers to make and star in films for the studio. After Wonka. Yeah, Wonka and Dune, Dune, yeah. That's their golden goose right now. I mean, that's smart because they lost to Nolan. And so they have to, I think it's smart to rack up a few big names in the producing department to help them create great new films. And then they got Tom. Yeah, they just got Tom and they just got Chalamet. And so I think it's smart to collaborate and sign picture deals with huge stars like that. The audiences love and that have been um, really, he's just become a huge, huge force to be reckoned with the last couple of years with these two movies. Yeah. He's the first. I, I've, I've read he's the first actor in almost 50 years to have uh, two of the top grossing movies within six months of each other. Yeah, back to back, right? Mm-hmm. Awesome stat. And a lot of big actors, they, they're they becoming producers these days. They're getting their projects made. You know, being a producer doesn't necessarily mean you're on set producing, but a lot of the times it can be acquiring the rights to a project or yeah. acquiring the rights to a book. Setting so, up the team. So he, he produced Bones and All. With Luca, yeah. So he probably, maybe, I'm guessing, acquired, helped acquire the rights to the pro, to the book to make it into a movie. So he's gonna have a lot of control of his career. Yeah, which is smart. Great, Very great cool. stuff all around. 
So we have some hit or miss news right now, depending on how you feel. So obviously we all love the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise with Johnny Depp. But because of the last five years, he's been cut from Warner Brothers. But the reboot that we've all been hearing rumors about the last two years is finally a go. And from Jerry Brockheimer uh, confirmed that they're working on it. He revealed very small amount of news and information about it. But he said um, they're going forward with a new reboot. It's not going to involve Giant Depp at all. It's not going to involve Margot Robbie because that one apparently she's going to be in a separate Pirates movie that she's going to lead. Yes. But that's not this news. This news is a younger cast of Pirates looking for a hidden treasure. It's a new movie, a different movie yes. that probably will be connected to Margot Robbie's film that will star Io Adebri from The Bear. Rumors about that. That's Rumors. not confirmed. Yeah, I mean, Nothing's no, confirmed. Yeah. confirmed. So, and then that being said, the Margot Robbie-led film is still in development uh, from the director of Birds of Prey. So that's so it looks like they have two different Pirates movies being made in development at the same time. I just think that they're just going to make too young and hut of a cast for That's a the thing. Movie. Okay. And it's not going to be like a Pirates movie. If it's like the, the younger, a young cast of Pirates looking for hidden treasure, here's the thing. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, what, what it got so right about Pirates is the Pirates look like Pirates. Yeah. <laughs> like if you have a cast of like late teens and hot early 20 year olds, this doesn't feel like Pirates. They don't feel like Pirates. And I will say, Will Turner, he becomes a Pirate, yes. but he's not a Pirate. Elizabeth is not a Pirate in the she first one. She becomes a yes. Pirate. She, they fall in with Pirates. Yeah. That's ex- I, was, I was about to say that. Like The Pirates are piratey. They're very pirate. Very pirate-y. Yeah, very piratey. <laughs> and then, yes. You got you, fake eyes yes, and peg legs. Yes, you have a young, hot cast with these two. Just very beautiful people. But they're not Pirates. And then Jack becomes a Pirate later in the franchise. And then... Um, well, Jack's always been a pirate. Yeah. Well, technically, yeah. By birth, yeah. And then Elizabeth becomes a pirate in the third film. Pirate. Uh, are you talk- No, Jack's always been I'm a sorry, pirate. I'm sorry. Will. Okay. Sorry, Will. <laughs> I was like, sorry, Will. Like, he's a fucking pirate. <laughs> sorry. So Jack. Oh, Jack's obviously a pirate. But Will becomes a pirate Yeah. by the end of the first film. And then Elizabeth becomes a pirate by At World's End, obviously. And so it's like they had the hot young stars, but like they weren't pirates yet. You know what I mean? It just sounds odd to have a, like young pirates. I don't know, and, man. I don't know. Because I think they did it so well, especially in the first three with Gore Verbinski, who really just championed that franchise and made awesome, huge blockbuster spectacle films. Um, but, but the biggest thing is the pirates are old and gritty and gruff looking and scary looking. And, and like, you're like, you look at that ship, you're like, okay, those are pirates. It's going to be get that. how I met your father, except with a pirate <laughs> ship. That's what I'm worried about. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> this is going to be like a little kid bossing everyone around, I, I bet. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this news. The Margo one, sure, but then like a young hut cast of pirates looking for hidden treasure. <laughs> I don't know. I'm it sounds adding, like the goodies. I'm adding the adjective of hut. <laughs> They're gonna be hot. It's gonna be a young hut cast. It sounds like goodies, honestly. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> too keen on this one. Uh, let's move on to some more news. Ready or not, the awesome horror film starring Samara Weaving will get a sequel, and she will reprise her role with Adam Robitel in Talks to Direct. I think that movie is excellent. I love the ending. It's one of my favorite Final Girl horror films. And I'm curious what they could do with the second film because the way it ends, obviously I won't spoil it, but if you haven't seen it, I can't recommend Ready or Not Enough. It's so excellent. The way they ended, it's sort of ambiguous of you could go forward with the story with this character, and I think that's really enticing and interesting as hell. Well, if you yeah, if you think about it, technically now she's cursed. So, because she's well, part yeah, of the family, yeah, yeah, she's yeah, to an extent. That's yeah. what I was thinking about, but I don't want to yeah. spoil what happens. So, yeah, yeah, so when Vin Diesel shows up, <laughs> when at the end. Vin Diesel shows up with <laughs> with the charger, he's like, "Hey, girl, and Rocket Raccoon, are you ready or not? And Rocket Raccoon's <laughs> on the roof. Are you ready or not? Are you ready or not?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I could help, I could help myself. I saw Bradley Cooper in person recently. In person? Yeah. When was this? A couple weeks ago. What? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me this? I forgot. What the fuck? What happened? Just, he was just with his daughter. Uh-huh. Where? Uh, I was at Disneyland. At Disneyland? Yeah. You went to Disneyland? Yeah. When? Like, what month is it? Like a month ago. Uh-huh. Something like that. Were they getting swarmed? No, no. He was on a... You can... If you're very wealthy or a celebrity, you can do sort of a private tour where a Disney special employee will take you around the park. Uh-huh. They even have... I had no idea this existed. They have underground tunnels and, and areas that they'll take people like that. The elites? Yeah, the elites. <laughs> but you can't have massive celebrities walk around yeah. Disney. They'll get swarmed. Yeah, There's a million yeah. people there. It'd be insane. So they take them privately on tours. They take them around the park just to 
them and their family or whatever. And then they have underground tunnels and secret doors that they get to go in and out. They actually have elite versions of all the rides underground. <laughs> they, get to, they do. They get to skip. He waited, but he waited in the uh, lightning lines. <laughs> they take an elevator right up to the front row. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he was just with his daughter. Everyone was freaking out. But it, it was cool. It was, it was, oh, that's it was sweet. To see him in person. It was, yeah, it was right, right around the Oscar time. Very handsome. Very handsome guy, yeah. Like all the crew of Disney, they're like, Bradley Cooper's in this line. <laughs> just so you know, don't freak out. <laughs> I'm not freaking out. Are you? Don't just so, don't yeah, freak he, out, guys. He's like eight feet in front of me. Wow. Yeah. You could have spat on him. I I could have. <laughs> That's how close you were. I don't know why I would? <laughs> no, I'm just saying in terms of like. Oh, I definitely getting some spat scale. On him. Yeah, the yeah. scale. That was yeah, how yeah, close yeah, he that's was. how close he was. Wow. Yeah. Could you smell him? I wanted to. <laughs> I wanted to. Well, you can't smell shit in there except for French fries because they just pump that smell through the whole theme park. Make you hungry. Yeah, Bradley Cooper was right there. Wow. Wow. It's interesting when you see someone that famous like in person. That Yeah, that, that guy's close, very famous. Like seven feet away. Because uh-huh. we were waiting in the lightning line, which is the good line, the, the fast one. The you were in the elite line. And the normies yeah. were in the other line. <laughs> and everyone, there are people just like looking at it. Like everyone's like gawking. Like some kid was pointing like, oh my Wow, that's cool, very cool. Well, Anyways, that's a that's a fun anecdote. I, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up we have some Disney news. Disney Plus and Hulu have finally merged into Dislu. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's just called Dis-Lu. Disney. It's just still called Disney and Hulu. <laughs> but they've merged the yeah apps. they've merged together, so you can actually that's all in one. You one go to Disney page. Plus. Yeah. So you go to Disney Plus and they have the Hulu section. Yeah, it's like a around. dashboard so you can watch everything. It's called the full Hulu experience on Disney Plus. I think Dislu sounds better though. Yeah, they should have gone Dislu. <laughs> Dislu, <laughs> come re-brand. on. Come on, bro. Dislu. It's funny. I saw an image and it was like the Shogun banner on, on, on top of the Disney Plus page. It's interesting to see that. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It was inevitable. They have to. It was a matter of time, honestly. It's a matter of time. Let's move on to some really, really it's, uh, cool $60 news. It's $60 per month. I'm just kidding. <laughs> really, really cool news right here, right now. Megalopolis, Francis Ford Coppola's latest film. He's finally been screening it. He did a private filmmaker friend screening. Then I think they did a very limited screening for very specific press. Important press, yeah. Important people in the Not industry. Us. And so we got a little bit of a plot from this. The film follows the destruction of a metropolis, which brings clashing visions of the future an architectural idealist played by Adam Driver and the mayor played by Giancarlo Esposito debate on whether to embrace the future and build a utopia or take a business as usual rebuild strategy. It's described as crackling with ideas that fuse the past with the future with an epic and highly visual fable that plays perfectly on an IMAX screen. You got to see this in IMAX, everybody. This sounds just like such an interesting movie. It's something he's been trying to make for yeah. 40 years too. It sounds so interesting. And uh, the people reaction said that Coppola was the happiest like person alive. He was so happy that he mm-hmm. showed up to people and finally got to make this movie self funded. So it cost 120 million. Let's support to make. Fran- Frank in this movie, everybody. Let's yeah. all go see it in IMAX. I, I mean, can't wait. A, and there's still no release date. An independently made IMAX size film? Are you kidding me? It's nuts. It's wild. I, I there's still no release date, right? No release date. It's um. I don't think it has full distribution yet. It's gonna be in IMAX theaters. I yeah, but I mean, I don't know about the rest of the distribution. I don't think they've gotten it yet. It's Francis Ford Coppola. They definitely get a yeah. There's no no distribution. It just says early 2024. Yeah, no distribution yet. Nothing. And it won't be his final film, FYI. He's actually already working on his next film. Mm-hmm. He says it's gonna be much smaller. Yeah, <laughs> he's probably not. Funny <laughs> he needs to sell more wine. <laughs> <laughs> Gold label, baby. All right, next up, uh, Mickey Seventeen has been pushed up two months from its previously changed release date of March thirty first, twenty twenty five. It's now set to release January thirty first, twenty twenty five. It was supposed to come out this weekend, everybody. Fuck. So this this weekend was the loss of Mickey Seventeen in theaters. Damn. Remember this day. Remember. Based on the book, Mickey Seven, can't recommend it enough. Fun it's, book. It's a, it's a really excellent read. It's very funny, yeah. and it, I can't wait to see what Bong Joon-ho does with it because he's got great dark humor, and I think he'll really take advantage of the source material of this movie starring Robert Pattinson. I cannot wait to see it. If you like sci-fi, epics, uh, futuristic movies, this is going to be your cup of tea. It's going to be excellent. And we all we've gotten is really just that teaser of the camera pushing in and going upside down while 
Pattinson's character, Mickey, is inside this chamber. I won't tell you what that chamber is. Also, it's going to be able to let Pattinson play with comedy really well. And yeah. I think he can crush it. Actually, we've talked about it because the synopsis is what it is. But uh, yeah. yeah, if you want to yeah. look it up, look it up. It's yeah. an awesome sounding movie. It's going to be fun. Some more news. Austin Butler has selected his next role. And he's going to be in Darren Aronofsky's next film called Caught Stealing. No, it's not spelled stealing like you're stealing something from somebody, but stealing as S-T-E-E-L-I-N-G. Steal. Stealing. Steve. Like steal. Like metal. Steve. The film follows a burned out former baseball player who's plunged into a wild fight for survival in the downtown criminal underworld of 90s New York City. That Whoa. sounds sick. Whoa, this is cool for an Aronofsky film. He looks like a baseball player, too. Yeah, he looks like a pitcher. He, could, he looks yeah. like he'd be a baseball player, or like a shortstop. Now, this guy's just like crushing it. Denis Villeneuve to Ari Aster. <laughs> to Darren Aronofsky, are you kidding me? He makes excellent decisions. Quentin yeah. Tarantino. Yeah. I mean, the guy makes really good decisions in his career. Did you hear about um, his option of Top Gun? So he revealed in an interview a few weeks ago that he had to choose between Top Gun or... Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he chose to do Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because it was his biggest dream as an actor to work with Tarantino. So he would have been... Uh, he would have been... He never. He didn't say which role he would have been. I'm he guessing it would have been Hangman. would have been... No, man. Because Tom seemed to really want Miles, Miles. Teller. I think I he. I, I think he really wanted Miles Teller. I guess it might have been Hangman then. Because he could have pulled off the Hangman um, tone. And he yeah, had he, he could have been Rooster too. And he's rem, he's so reminiscent of um, Val Kilmer. But he also looks sort of like he could be Goose's son with Rooster. Yeah, that's true. I think it would have probably been Rooster. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it could have been either or. But apparently, he was given the option to choose between both of those films, and he chose most of the time. That's interesting, especially. I mean, what would you pick? I would pick Tarantino. I'd pick Tarantino too. And nobody knew how. Big Top Gun, or how good and how big Top Gun was going to be. True, but I, I still, I, knowing how big Top Gun was, I yeah. still would have picked Tarantino because, yeah. like, to be in a Tarantino movie, it's a big thing. That's a badge of honor that not a lot of actors can say they've worn. Not just to be in it, but be a solid character in it. I mean, and just to share this, to share scenes with Brad Pitt and DiCaprio, like, that's really special. But that's good. <laughs> it's a private road. <laughs> <laughs> you come out here and smoke dope. <laughs> Fucking hippies. Fucking hippies. <laughs> so just sticky ass loud ass car yeah and then elvis i mean the guy makes such good decisions in his career right now like the last three four years it's insane austin butler's killing it right now he's blowing up all right next up we have the trailer it's a great teaser of your ghost lanthimos's film kinds of kindness which is already set to come out in june very shortly after poor things and it's, it's they made this movie kind of in secret and they had just announced it a couple months ago uh, nobody really knew about this film. And this is like, this is what movie trailers should be. There's just like, you have no idea what the fuck is going on. It's just, someone's just yeah. ripping donuts and drifting yeah. in a car. In a Mustang. Car. And it's just Not like, it looks like crazy. Oh, Charger? Something like that. So, yeah, some, there's a bunch of like crazy characters and ridiculous sequences. Margaret Qualley's in this. Jesse Plemons is in this. Uh, Willem Dafoe's in this. I have no idea what the hell's going on in this, but I want to see it. <laughs> it's so different yeah. than poor things. That's what a movie trailer should be. Oh, my God. And also, Yorgos going back to uh, contemporary settings. He did back-to-back -back period pieces. So yeah. he, he thrives. He's one of those filmmakers that can do both really well. Yeah, I agree. Exciting stuff. <laughs> Fucking, I don't Exciting know what the hell stuff. this is about, but I'm, I'm in. Let's talk about the MCU. It's been stale for a little while. So Thunderbolts is in production right now because Florence Pugh, she shared some video selfies from set and costumes. She's, you know, doing her Florence Pugh thing, being awesome, and she's just walking from the trailer. Then she's walking into one of the sound stages on set and talking to some of the crew and then chats with the director, and we get a little shot of... They obviously set this whole thing up. Like, you can't just do this. People, there were headlines saying Florence Pugh broke the rules and posted no, a video. This is all planned. Like the Jesus, director, guys. She went to the monitors. She went to Video Village, and, sh and there's a shot up. Like, they planned this entire thing out. This should not break any rules. This is all planned. <laughs> it's all just, all just, like, you, you don't just do that. <laughs> I don't understand how people don't, they just if, believe that. You think that. the director be like, oh, hey, Florence, thanks for filming this secret shot. <laughs> there's no problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah no. Post anything. You, you, why don't you just do a live of us film the scene? It's all planned. Do a live. She's, guys, she's a fucking actor. It's, it's all planned. <laughs> <laughs> Some but of the headlines. At least it's in production. Yeah, we you know I anticipate this film to get finished production 
then get into the edit and then do a year of reshoots probably. <laughs> That's usually the track record for MCU right now. So probably expect this movie in 2027, I'm guessing. 2030 probably. Like they'll wrap in, uh, in two months, but then like a year later, oh, we have to go back in and shoot everything over again. So I don't know when this movie's going to come out or when it's going to finish production, but it's in production. It's being filmed. It's happening. It's happening, guys. It's so ha- It's happening. Yelena's back. <laughs> She's honestly like the only thing I like about the MCU right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All right, next up, uh, Monkey Man. Dev Patel revealed so much information about the film, and we're going to see it on Tuesday. With yeah. he's going to be there. He didn't ask me anything. AMA, an AMA, and he read it, and he uh, talked about. I actually have more information than what we have here. He talked about all these huge problems that happened. So first of all. They got shut down multiple times because of COVID and then losing locations and losing uh, crew people. And it got to the point where they were, he was actually like with the crew, like helping build sets in between takes. And some of the biggest things were equipment would break so they would have to film on iPhones and GoPros. There was a, there was a big stunt sequence and action sequence where uh, characters were thrown through tables, wooden tables that would break. And they didn't have budget or the logistics to have new tables so every time they did a take the entire crew Dev Patel including they had to glue tables back together in between takes to make it look like he, it was like a normal table again to do another version of that shot um, there was a point where they had a huge they were working with the big crane that ended up breaking and so all the crane shots he had planned almost went out the window until they came up with a rope pulley system uh, <laughs> which they used as the crane for the camera and there's just so many other things. Uh, they actually had to change the location. He was planning to shoot um, in a huge location in a big area. They got shut down, and so he packed up the entire crew, and they all went to Indonesia where they shot most of the film, which was not part of the plan. They did it very last minute. He had to put the entire crew of 500 people up in a hotel, and that's where everyone— 500-person crew? Yeah, for extras and stuff. And Holy that's And that's shit. like where they filmed— That's where everyone lived for the entire production— um, it was all done last minute because they lost all of their sets and all of their locations uh, like a couple of months, a couple of weeks before filming. Also, their fi- the financiers wanted to pull the plug on it, and he was like begging them not to pull the plug within like two weeks of filming. And so there was just so many crazy things that happened, so many things that almost shut them down and did shut them down at times. And he went through like nine months, he said, of hell and joy as well, but they got it done. They went through three different cinematographers. Just so many things happened. It was apparently it sounded like a grueling shoot, but he got it done, and his team finished the film. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing it. I wonder if he slept. I doubt it. I wonder if he slept. That's that's insane. It's impressive, and because um, the the co- the commenter asked how much was it was it fun directing, and was it great to have a control of this of a set for for the first time? And he's like, it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Everything went wrong. It was insane. Um, but overall, he said he, he had an absolute um, a joyous experience that was also filled with so much chaos and so much carnage. I also, hold on, I'm pulling it up right here. I'm really excited to see this movie. And so he said, um, I quote, all of the locations we prepped for months beforehand were lost on the day. So we had to adapt last minute. Also, the borders closed and he couldn't bring a lot of the supporting characters that they originally hired. Um up for like getting into the area so <clears> that on top of that most of their camera equipment broke and they couldn't fly new things in so they had that's why they shot a lot of stuff on iPhones because they weren't able to transport because of the border being locked where they were filming they couldn't transport any new gear into the area and there's no Sammy's camera in yeah no gym. Sammy's camera <laughs> uh, but yeah he made this he and his crew made this rope camera which they called the pendulum cam which was just a crane from ropes <laughs> they were using that most of the time. Wow, I can't wait to see this. Yeah. This is awesome. It's just, you know, adapting and movie making ain't easy. Adapt Sometimes or die. everything goes wrong, and kudos to him for finishing the film and yeah. making it, and I can't wait to check it out on Tuesday. It's going to be awesome. We should do a review of it. Fuck yeah, man. I hope it does well. Y'all, go see Monkey Man. Some uh, interesting news right now. Velma, which has been labeled by many as some, one of the worst shows ever. Oh, made. the animated show? Yeah, the animated show is getting a second season. Despite terrible critical reviews, terrible audience scores, and I don't even know what the numbers were for this show, they weren't very good at all, I'm assuming. It's getting a second season. It comes out 
pretty early this year. People are saying like I, I'm ex- probably in the next couple of months it'll be on Max, but they're not mm-hmm. really advertising it. They're not doing any press for it at all. This might be the most unlike show ever. It's a 1.6 in IMDb, um, 39% Rotten Tomatoes, and a 7% Rotten Tomatoes audience score. Yeah, there's obviously review bombing going on, but still the critics didn't like it. Yeah. I, I just don't think... I haven't watched any of it. I've yeah. seen some clips, and it's just not good, man. It's just not good writing. It's just, I don't know who this show was made for, honestly. And then uh, 1.4 on Google ratings. Yeah. Damn. People do not like this show. But they're doing another season. I wonder why. Sounds like they're just lighting money on fire. <laughs> There was a trailer, though, for a movie that we've been talking smack about. Not talking smack, but just like joking about. It's a funny thing. Unfrosted, Jerry Seinfeld's origin story about how Pop-Tarts were created. Released the trailer. Gotta say, better than I expected. Looks better than I expected. I wasn't expecting them to go a surrealist route. And so I agree. It was like, I was expecting like a stupid traditional comedy biopic. I was expecting the Beanie Baby movie. Yeah, but... It looks like he's having a lot of fun, and it got it gets super surreal and really out there. The cast is crazy. There's yeah. so many banger actors and, and actresses in this movie, so many great comedians. <clears throat> also, Jerry Seinfeld wouldn't do something if he didn't feel like it would be good. Yeah, you know what I mean? True. The guy turned down $100 million to do Seinfeld's ninth season because he didn't think it would be as good. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The guy, like, you got to respect him. I mean, he's never compromised, yeah. ever, except for maybe the B-movie. The movie. <laughs> just yeah, kidding. that's just animated. Um, <laughs> it looks better than I expected because usually with these product origin stories, they're always the same thing. They're not great looking and they're very, you know, eh, who wants to watch that? But this looked pretty interesting though. So Pop-Tarts Origins. Origins. Might have to check this one out. Might have to check this one out. I like the shot of inside the toaster oven like a, like a rocket launch. Yeah, I like how they're putting the two companies, Kellogg's and Quaker, uh, not Quaker, the other big one. Well, there was the Quaker Oats yeah, joke. Yeah, but like the two big cereal companies as like super rivals that hate each other. I yeah. think that was pretty funny. Yeah, it looks pretty, it looks, actually looks pretty funny. Yeah. All right, next up. Speaking of Tom Cruise, speaking of Top Gun. Speaking of Jerry Bruckheimer. Jerry Bruckheimer confirms that a Top Gun 3 story is in development and being written right now. Uh, Joseph Kaczynski Pitched a great idea. Love it. And Tom said that he really liked it, so they're developing it. Um, but there's no confirmation about whether it would get made or not. Jerry Bruckheimer said, you never know when it's going to get made because Tom is so busy. He's doing Mission Impossible right now. He's got a picture after that. Hopefully, we'll get a screenplay that he loves and will be back in the air once again. That sounds awesome. I mean, oh, and also, since the story, the story still has Tom Cruise as the lead. Better be the lead. Yeah. Not seeing it if he's not the lead, not nope. at the end of the no day, way. saving the day. Mm-hmm. That's how you do it. And I love that Joseph Kaczynski pitched it because obviously he's such a great director and Maverick was excellent. I remember when we first heard this news, we were like, oh, we don't need another one. But also, fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> Steven Spielberg recently <laughs> saw Dune Part 2 and did a little Q&A with uh, – Nolan was there, right? No, just Denis. Oh, was, um, <laughs> Denis was there. <laughs> just Denis. And he said it's one of the most brilliant science fiction films he's ever seen. And also said that specifically the scene where Paul rides the sandworm, rides Shai Halud, was one of the most incredible scenes he's ever seen in his life. You know how Denis Villeneuve and his team filmed that? The sand dune? Well, it was over the course of several months. They um they actually did it all practically. Yeah, they threw Sam and sand in Timmy's face all day. <laughs> so hold on, let me just they're just like me, throw buckets of sand at him. Let me break down the shot. Break it down. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they actually they hired a snake. <laughs> Shut up. They hired a sandworm, sa- Shai Halud. All right, I'm just trying to make a cool TikTok clip here. Okay, just okay. give me some space. <laughs> <laughs> so the way they filmed. Uh, <laughs> Come on, man, get it out, get it out. You want to do it? Get it. Okay, out. so they filmed uh, Paul. Jumping on and riding the giant sandworm Shai Halud practically. And the way they did this was they actually built an uh, artificial sand dune. And inside the sand were these huge cylinders, which were attached to giant trucks on the desert. And so because then he wanted to have the stuntman running atop the dune and then having the earth just collapse when Shai Halud rode through it. And that's, that's what you see in the shot where the camera's following to, uh, Paul and then he falls, and the camera fall, dro- drops down with him and tilts down as he falls into the the cloud of dust. And you're like, oh, fuck, where is he? They did that all practically, except for the giant sandworm, obviously. And so they had these huge cylinders inside of the sand dune they built. And they timed it perfectly so that as the stuntman ran across the sand dune, one by one, each truck 
would drive and pull each cylinder out of the sand dune, completely collapsing it. And so then the stunt man, they, it took them like several versions, se- several takes to get the timing right. It got, and then they timed it perfectly where as the stuntman was running, the first cylinder would be breached and then the second and then the third until there was just nothing under the stuntman. He fell into the actual dust. Can you imagine how long it took to set up each shot? It probably took a very long time. That's very cool. Yeah. So they did it all practically except for the sandworm. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you for giving me a moment. <laughs> Anytime, man. All you got to do is ask. <laughs> this guy. We all really enjoyed that. That's really interesting. Thanks, man. I'm glad you enjoyed it. You gotta look up some behind-the-scenes stuff of that. Yeah. (laughs) Final Destination 6, everybody. It's happening. It's been cast. You asked for it. You all asked for it. (laughs) Breck Bassinger. Who's that? Theo Briones. Caitlin Santa Juana. Anna Lore. Owen Patrick Joyner and Max Lloyd Jones have all been cast. I have not heard of a single one of them. I'm sure they're all be terrific, though. I'm sure they're all be. I'm, I'm sensing sure some all, sarcasm. I'm sure they're all young and hot. I'm sure they're all very attractive. Very young I and hot. <laughs> Honestly, if they do another, you gotta get a log in there, a, a, tr- a tree log truck in there somewhere. Nah, man. You gotta do it, man. No, just, just for the fans. It's only one of them. Or at least tease it. Maybe. At least show it. Get audiences to be like, oh, is there going to be another log one? At least they're not pretending like it's not a reboot <laughs> and calling it Final Destination 6, whereas when Scream was just Scream again, it's like... You, they reset the, with the titles. Is the fifth one or is it a reboot? They what reset the titles. This is actually Final Destination 6, The New Empire. <laughs> <laughs> the scary empire. <laughs> empire of death. <laughs> the Frozen Empire, that one doesn't make any sense because it's not even... I won't spoil it, but... The ice doesn't even come into play until the like, very end. Yeah. And where's the Empire, right? Yeah, it's just New York. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I think they just test. I think they just test with the uh, focus groups titles. And Empire just hit Empire. real good. People like Empire. Let's the go with new Empire. Empire. I can't Frozen believe. Empire. I can't believe the top two films this this week have Empire in the titles found destination the new empire dune part two the sandy empire the kung fu panda four the the, 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 kung fu the martial empire immaculate the it's nun empire <laughs> <laughs> what a time man james wan is producing a new horror film called the monkey it's going to star theo james tatiana Maslany, and elijah wood oh. it's a data, an adaptation of a stephen king book so it's called the monkey how many books has he written more books than anyone i think so uh, I'm, the, I'm mon- the monkey is a short story oh god actually a lot he wrote in 82 i'm pretty sure there's already been a movie about it there has not been a movie about it so I'm you don't sure know what the fuck you're talking I'm about i'm pretty sure there hasn't been a movie about so the story it. begins with two young brothers peter and dennis finding a symbolic banging monkey toy you know with the symbols yeah in the attic of their great uncle's house soon it is revealed how their father, Hal, discovered the toy monkey inside an antique chest owned by his father, who disappeared under mysterious circumstances. The monkey is cursed, and every time it claps the mechan- mechanical symbols together, someone close to Hal dies. Oh, okay. I don't know about that one. but I think re- it was made. It's called Monkey Shines. Monkey Shines. I'm on the Wikipedia. There's nothing. He just made everything scary, huh? <laughs> the symbol monkey. <laughs> the cover of the book's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, man. All right. What do we have left? We have one more bit of news. We do have one more bit of news. Let's talk about it. Uh, one of the great classic horror films, if anyone's a fan and looking into older horror, uh, The Night of the Hunter is a great film about a serial killer that's now being remade by um, Scott Derrickson, uh, the director and writer of The Black Phone. And what's the Ethan Hawke movie? The Black Phone. The other, the first one they did. Bagul, the guy with the, the one with the Bagul. Oh, Insidious. Insidious, and um, no, it's Sinister. Sinister, thank you, Sinister. Sinister. <laughs> yeah, it's not Insidious. This not is James Wan, um, and also Doctor Strange. So he's adapting a new remake of Night of the Hunter. The Night of the Hunter is a great film. Uh, stars Robert Mitchum as a serial killer, and he's he marries a widow, knowing that her husband, her dead husband, left a box of money somewhere. A fortune. A fortune. And he starts, he pretends that he's just like a great new husband, super nice guy, but he obviously wants the money, so he's just trying to find it. And the the woman's two children are on to him and realize his plan. Um, it's a really it's a really great horror film. Robert Mitchum's one of the all time villains in 
If you want to check out the Night of the Hunter, it's on Max. Highly recommend checking it out. It's um, I could get behind a remake of this. It's almost it's seventy year old movie almost. So I could get behind. Let's do it. it. Yeah, sounds cool. Yeah, Scott Cooper's an awesome director. That's cool. Sounds terrific. All right, that wraps movie news this week. Don't forget to get tickets to our live show in Boston at the Middle East. It's a great club, and we can't wait to see you all there. We're giving away 10 tickets again, if you heard at the beginning of the episode. All you have to do is send us an Instagram DM, and you'll win a free ticket. If you win the contest, you'll be entered in, and you'll win a ticket. And hopefully you'll bring somebody. And we can all hang after the show and grab a beer, grab a brewski, kid. Oh, yeah. It's going to be an awesome night. We can't wait to see everybody there. And we're going to talk about Boston movies, obviously, Boston since movies, we'll be in yeah. Boston. We'll do some cool stuff. And we're going to do a, you know, a hangout after. It'll be a little meet and greet, chill, get a couple of drinks, have some food. It'll be a lot of fun. I literally just said that. Anyways. I just said that, Anthony. Did you hear about how Denis Villeneuve did the sand dune? I just, just said that. Thank you so much for being fans of the show and listening to Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Become a patron at patreon.com slash Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Leave those five-star ratings and reviews on Spotify and Apple. And take care, everybody. See you next time. Thank you for watching Raiders of the Lost Podcast. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button as well. Notifications for sure. Listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everywhere. You can listen to podcasts. And be sure to check out this other content we have on our YouTube channel.